Have you guys ever been on the Disney ride, It's a Small World? If not, congratulations, you've maintained a piece of your sanity that some of us will never ever get back again. But for everyone else, you now have first-hand knowledge that repetition is the most basic form of brainwashing and indoctrination that there is. And everywhere you look in the mainstream media right now, it's all about the chaos. There was chaos and confusion at airports today as President Trump's immigration crackdown took effect. This capping off a day of confusion, chaos and protests in several airports across the country. Effects of President Trump's travel ban continue to sow outraging chaos at airports across the country. You had chaos here in LA as well as airports around the country and abroad. What's very scary to people is the sort of um, uh, the tendency towards chaos. We have never faced this before. Purposeful, vindictive chaos. Or is the chaos just chaos, Aaron? I, I, mean, I think it's just been chaos. Argued restoring Trump's ban would, quote, unleash chaos again. Immigration chaos. Chaos. Chaos on the campus of UC Berkeley. The chaos that we've had the last two weeks, and it's hard to believe it's only been two weeks. Chaos. That's going to be par for the course going forward. It's going to be complete chaos. And it isn't just the media. Hollywood is getting in on the action. Section 2, promoting revolutions, violence, riots, military coups, and Madonna even told a crowd of thousands of protesters that she thought a lot about blowing up the White House. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. If we were viewing all of these events in a bubble, that'd be one thing. But we're not. We're viewing this in the same world where the same people who are freaking out over a temporary travel ban from seven primarily Muslim Middle Eastern countries have virtually ignored the fact that President Obama spent the last eight years bombing people with remote-controlled death machines in those same exact countries, spurring the refugee crisis in the first place. Did you ever see this kind of protest over that? What started out Saturday as a spontaneous demonstration at JFK. And it's not even a Muslim ban. As I pointed out in my last video, Trump ever so conspicuously left Saudi Arabia off the list, as well as the United Arab Emirates and Turkey. Why? Because there's a specific path to Persia that's already been laid out a long time ago. This isn't about fighting terror. And while it's hard to feel sorry for people who've been so enamored with granting the state nearly unlimited power that they they could just never envision a world where it ends up in the hands of someone they don't like or disagree with. It's almost worse, in fact, I think it is worse, to watch supposedly liberty-loving patriots just jump the fence. Now you have become the very thing you swore to destroy. Plod dictatorial use of executive orders they once slammed Obama for signing, not even that long ago, with not just a predictable, albeit illogical, well Obama did it, so why can't Trump? But going above and beyond and actually sending out pictures like this one depicting Jesus Christ guiding Trump's executive order pin. The Kool-Aid these people are drinking is a neurotoxin, just FYI. On top of that, I've seen these same liberty lovers cheer on huge red flags coming out of Trump in recent weeks. And I'm not just talking about the beating of war drums for Iran almost immediately out of the gate. I'm talking about things like this. The president also threatened federal action to address the violence in Chicago. He tweeted, if Chicago doesn't fix the horrible carnage going on, he wrote, I will send in the feds. And this. You gotta hand it to the system that's orchestrating all of this because they certainly did sweep a large portion of dissenters back onto the government-loving reservation. And I've seen people go from supposedly libertarian or voluntarist or anarcho-capitalist to a full-on state-worshipping apologist fascist in no time flat. When I point out all the blatant hypocrisy, I can sit angry, hateful comments in pictures like this one, to which I respond with pictures like this one. Where did your value system go? It reminds me of Jurassic Park logic. Just because the T-Rex saves you from the Velociraptor does not mean he's your new best friend. The Liberty Movement's been co-opted and the system had all the data sucked off of Ron Paul's failed presidential campaigns and especially the 2012 campaign with which to do it. It's the fourth largest site in the world in comments. As Alt Market's Brandon Smith so succinctly put it back in September, here's why this was a necessary step. Whenever you have a rebellion focused on the inherent ideals of freedom, totalitarian institutions struggle to intervene. It's hard for a tyrant to fight a rebellion based on freedom because the idea is more powerful than any weapon or any form of treachery. No matter how advanced the tyranny is, and no matter how many rebels they imprison or kill, the idea of freedom endures. 
Reminded me of Braveheart, actually, when I read that. Freedom! Smith continues, the only way to destroy a rebellion like this, a rebellion like the Liberty Movement, is to make it about something other than freedom. Powers that be have to convince that movement to support policies that are destructive to its own ideals. If this can be done, then that rebellion has lost the advantage of principle, the only advantage that really matters. And I'm just saying, when you have people who claim to be awake and against the system, crying and singing the national anthem like it's 1984 on steroids, that principle has been lost, okay? So the liberty movement is now the alt-right movement, and the liberal left and alt-right are at each other's throats like little puppets acting out their assigned parts here. Chaos. 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 The level of hate being spewed back and forth on Twitter feeds and Facebook walls and article comment sections has jumped the shark. People are openly calling for more police state now, martial law. They want civil war. They're calling for civil war on social media like they actually think that's their original idea they just came up with and not an agenda that everyone has been force fed and currently are being brainwashed and programmed to fulfill. Chaos. 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 Both online and off, what we're seeing is a manipulated civil unrest unlike any since this channel was started about six years ago. And we know it's being funded and organized organized from the top down, but so many sides are falling for this. It's just, I'm sitting back and I'm watching free thinking or who people who used to be free thinking individuals turn into program pawns, just spouting off the agenda, just repeating it to each other and promoting it. They say chaos, chaos, chaos and the people are providing it. Chaos. 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 It wouldn't even, it's not a shock now when they say that George Soros, for example, is funding a lot of this stuff. It's not a surprise to anyone when they say that. They've, George Soros has just most recently been tied to the Berkeley riots. Chaos on the campus of UC Berkeley. Conservative free speech is sparking an all out of control liberal riot. But if you actually look at some of the video coming out of the Berkeley riots, you'll see a group of people dressed in black with black hoods and black faces face coverings, moving through the crowd, you know, together in a row. Those are the people that if you look at who actually smashed up the building, started the fire, these people brought a diesel generator to start a bonfire with. This is the crew that provocateured and, and turned protests that had already been very highly organized and scripted anyways, from a, a protest to a riot. This is all being provocateured and engineered to keep the majority of everyone on either sides of this thing fighting with each other. And if, if people just took off their labels for a minute, their political labels, and stepped away from the identity politics and backed up about 50 feet and took a look at what's actually going on here, you will see how completely orchestrated and manipulated and manufactured this unrest is to cause chaos. Why? Because they want to bring order out of it. Have you ever read Webster Tarpley's unauthorized Obama biography? It was published just before Obama was first elected. And if you look at the description, Tarpley writes about how Obama is a community organizer pawn of Wall Street who will keep the nation divided and fighting amongst themselves to prevent any challenge to Wall Street's financial goals. And what we're seeing right now with a president who again has filled his cabinet with Goldman Sachs, he's even got House of Rothschild in there. I'm sick of hearing why that's, we're supposed to just overlook that. All this other, all these things now we're just supposed to overlook like that's not happening when it's totally happening and it's completely in your face. This whole thing looks like the next evolution of the same exact agenda that Obama worked so diligently on for the last eight years. Have you figured out the name of the movie we're watching yet? It's called Divide and Conquer. And it's been in the playbook for a very long time because it tends to work. So right now the agenda is chaos. Chaos, chaos, chaos everywhere. And every time you hear the system toss that word around. Chaos, 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 chaos. See it for the manipulation and agenda that it is. It's a program. It's programming to keep us fighting amongst ourselves. This is a ride. And I really hope people look around and recognize the ride for what it is and get off soon. <laughs>